so like I was saying, this series is brought to you all in collaboration with my beloved art school, the Leo Marshut School of Painting and Drawing. Um, that's where all of my art education took place. Everything I know about painting and drawing, all my practice, all my experience comes from there. And I just want to take a moment to bring you to their website for a moment so you can become familiar with it. And I will also drop the URL into the chat so that you could copy and paste it somewhere on your computer and maybe check it out another time. Um, they run programs all throughout the year in the United States, in Europe. Uh, so check out this page right here, programs to see what they got coming up. Uh, next week, or not next week, but in two weeks, they're actually all going to Venice, Italy for a painting trip that I dearly wish I could join them for. Um, but um, maybe I'll make it happen next year. I need to sort out some things here in uh, in Ireland first off. So check out the leomarshutschool.org. And if you, depending on where you're coming from, I know I have a lot of students here from different places, different programs that I've taught. But if you have not yet checked out my website as well, there's a couple of things for you here as well. Um, so in the chat, I dropped the URL for my website, site and in.site. This is the front page. Depending on how you found out about this practice hour, whether it's through Smithsonian, around town DC, Marshoots, if you'd like to stay in the loop for more of these sessions, um, I recommend that you sign up for these practice memos and every month in your inbox, you'll get a notification with the time, date, and the Zoom registration link, as well as a little bit of inspiration from me. So you could use this right here. And then also, if you happen to be looking for a little more individualized guidance, personalized art instruction, suggested practice, I do have a couple spots uh, left this year to work one-on-one -on -one with people. So if you're interested in that, use this form on the right to schedule a free mini critique with me. You can just drop your name, basically write me an email right here and we'll set up a time. We'll take a look at some of your work. Uh, I'll provide feedback. We can chat about goals and go from there. All right, so without further ado, let me get rid of this stuff and bring you to the painting for this afternoon. So, Inspired by the Leo Marshoot School's trip to Venice next year. Since we can't go with them, I want to take us there with our practice today. So oh. if you just wrapped up my watercolor class with the Smithsonian, this may look familiar to, to you, which we've done this already. Um, and we can definitely do it again and maybe see things differently or go deeper into the work, go deeper into the painting. Um, but I wanted to take us to Venice. I wanted to do something that was colorful because spring is blooming even here in Gray Ireland. We were just walking this morning and there's all sorts of bluebells and tulips that are out. So I wanted to bring you all something that is a little bit more comfortable. Let me get rid of this sidebar. There we go. All right, so feel free to get started on that, okay? I am going to switch over to my desk in just a minute, but um, I want you all to have this to get started. As you're getting started, just wanna uh, sh share a couple guidelines and reminders. Um, this is, I don't have a planned lesson. This is just an opportunity for artists to get some practice, um, you know, in the company of others. Uh, when working from, I will suggest, however, when working from a masterwork like this, the goal is not to make a forgery. Don't try to replicate it perfectly. Have your own experience with the work and practice putting it together according to whatever key relationships or essential elements or qualities, characteristics that you see. Make your own parallel image with your own touch. Um, it's still an opportunity to learn. In a second, I will be, in a second, I will be switching over to uh, my desk, um, and you know, sharing insights about how I'm going to approach this work. And as as the image unfolds, I'll keep you know sharing things that I'm doing along the way. Um, if watching my work would be 
beneficial to you during this session, I recommend switching to side-by-side -side speaker view, okay, on your Zoom meeting. And then you can slide the little bar. If you move your cursor from the reference image to the right, you'll find a vertical bar that you can click and drag towards the middle. And that will make my desk, which I'll spotlight in a minute, a little more 50-50 on your screen with the reference image. Um, beyond that, yeah, feel free to ask me questions. Uh, feel free to just interrupt, say, unmute yourself, say, hey, Nick, um, you know, how come you're doing it that way? Or, you know, how did you decide to start that way? Um, I'm here to share, you know, feedback, insights, tips, whatever I can to, uh, to make this, um, you know, a little bit educational. Um, otherwise, if you're just in the zone and you just want to work, feel free to mute me. Um, that's totally fine too. I will ask though, if you're not going to ask a question, I do ask that you try to keep yourself muted just to keep um, aware of any background noise, you know, uh, fire trucks uh, driving down the street or dogs barking in the front yard or anything like that. Um, and then finally, I'd like to say a special thank you to our returning participants who regularly contribute. Uh, me and the Leo Marshute School, we're happy to offer this monthly online practice hour at no cost to our community. If you are enjoying this program, please consider making a donation to support the mission of the Leo Marshute School of Painting and Drawing. In the link that I'm dropping in the chat right now is a link that you could donate, make a contribution if you would like. All right, enough of me talking. Let me full screen this and switch to my desk. Mary, what's up? Mary! <laughs> All right, let me switch to my desk. Spotlight this. And away we go. Okay. All right. So I'll bring this down here. I think there's enough natural light that I could get away with that. Or uh, actually, it is going to get darker. So I'm going to drop this light on. Cool. Okay, and let me switch this. Man, how many do we have in the group today? We've got a ton of you all in here. 19 participants, fantastic. Thank you all again for joining. I am so thankful to be able to do this with all of you. All right. Now that I got a view with all of you, let me put this away and we can start painting. So the past couple of times we've done this practice session, I have opted for good old pencil and paper. And this time I'm going to watercolor. Um, I've really been enjoying watercolor lately. I think, I don't know, when the year first started, I think I just taught a lot of watercolor classes last fall and I was kind of watercolored out, but I feel... I feel like I'm I'm discovering new things with watercolor lately. So I'm really excited to try some more. Before I even get started, well, actually what I am gonna do is, usually when I see an image like this, I like to start with just wetting my paper and sort of going for a very general amorphous um, sort of underpainting that as the water absorbs and slowly gets drier and drier, I will continue adding more um, marks and colors and strokes. But generally, I like to start my watercolors just getting the whole thing wet. I like to fly by the seat of my pants if you will, when it comes to watercolor.
So. See what we got here. Actually, before I do that, I'm gonna take a pencil real quick and just mark out sort of the dimensions of this thing. Um, and also, just want to remind everyone that when we do these masterwork practice hours, it's really entirely up to you what medium you use. Um, I try to choose things that will be suitable in both color and non-color media. It doesn't. If you just want to draw today i think it's you know you can get valuable practice drawing um, this image as you would watercoloring it so don't ever feel like i don't like to force people's hand too much frankly with these activities i like you to get the um get the you know the practice that you want to get if you just like i was talking about i was really tired of watercolor for a while and um, I kind of just stuck with drawing for a little bit and that's totally fine. And now I'm feeling, you know, reinvigorated with watercolor. So I'm getting back into it, but no, um, no pressure to, to do something a certain way. I mean, bring pastels, bring uh, charcoal colored pencils, really whatever, whatever you want to practice with. Um, that's, that's totally, totally fine. Okay. So as I was saying, let me get this wet All right, so I've got a little bit of water going on on my paper, and I'm just going to get started right away with dropping some color into the moistened surface of my sheet. So let's see what we got here. Let's get some yellow down. And I'm, not, I'm just taking it straight from the pans of color in my set. I'm not going to mix it or try and get too fancy. I just want to get some color down where I see it. Not worrying too much about, you know, what's above the horizon, what's below the horizon. I'm just forgetting that it's even a landscape and just letting my eyes do the do the work of guiding me through how this image is being put together. All right. That's a good start. Then we can get some... You know, maybe we'll get a little orange in there. Why not? Whoops, that's not work for my phone charger, no big deal. Hey Jules, you all right over there? I see you looking at the screen kind of kind of mesmerized. No, I am just, I'm listening to some music in the background and the music got me like out of the zone, so I just needed to change it. <laughs> oh, no worries at all, no worries at all. Just making sure you're, um, 
No. You know, you're not, you're, 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 you're <laughs> not lost in the sauce with any of this. All right. So let's keep going. While the paper is moist, I'm going to go for some of that red in the middle. Again, I'm not even worrying about like the building or the buildings. Um, I know with watercolor, I can usually just keep adding, adding, adding to make things darker. Um, so I'm not really worrying about that right now. Again, I'm mostly just focusing on colors. Another thing I like to do sometimes is I'll take a dry paper towel if I need to like further shape things. If I don't like how, you know, something's too dark or I don't like the way something is on my paper while it's still wet or moist at least a little bit, I can take a wet paper towel and shape it. And I might do that a little bit now to soften up some of these, um, some of these edges, but not critical, not crucial. And yes, I'm going to actually have to, I'm surprised how quickly my paper dried. So I'm gonna get a little more water on there and then go for some of the blues up top and down low. So let's play with a little bit of this. All right, so that's a bit of a start for me right there. Again, for me, generally my approach with these things is just wet the page, get some colors down and then go from there. I don't, um, I try not to overthink it too much. Um, I do want it to have a little bit of time, a little bit of time to 
dry before I go on top of it anymore. Um, I'm looking at it, you know, I'm curious about this transition between the blue and the yellow at the sky and across the water on the bottom. How to get that subtle green. It's definitely like calling to me. I feel like I could really use that transition, but part of me is wondering if, if um, I don't know, maybe I introduce it a little later and not fuss with it right now. You know, let's do here. Let's bring a little more water and let's see if I can get something in there. So I'm going to switch to a slightly smaller brush. Let me see if I can get some of that green in there. I want to dilute it down. I don't want it to be too bright or too vibrant. Um, I do want it there, but I don't want it to... It's really subtle to me. I don't really want it to overpower anything else. Let's see. At this point, I've succeeded in contaminating both my water containers. So the water container that I had dedicated to clean water for washes is now um, a more like a broth for a soup, a warm broth for a soup. So I'll have to just live with that. Let's see if I can help this transition. I'm really curious about it. And though I may do some more washes on top of what I painted to try and give it that modeled M O T T L E D um, effect. Let's see. Let's see what happens. Nick, I had a quick question. Yeah, what's up, Mary? Um, when you're doing watercolors, how often do you, or do you ever or, um, begin with like a, a little bit of a sketch, like a pencil sketch or something, and incorporate that into your painting? Or do you just go for the colors? Um, or do you, is it, does it depend on what you're doing, kind of? I think it, I think it depends on what I'm doing. Um, I definitely have 
there are definitely some sometimes i will take a pencil and i may not like draw and outline everything but i'll certainly you know block off some really significant moments that i know like okay nick like don't touch this area or like um you know this is eventually going to become you know the the bright flower in the image or something like that but it happens to me probably like less than 10 percent of the time but i'm not saying it doesn't happen ever i do do it sometimes um mostly i love just getting the whole thing wet and just putting color down where i see it and then i sort of i like general I like starting really general at the beginning and then I get more and more specific. So sometimes actually also at the end, after putting colors down and sort of getting darks and stuff, I may take pencil to it at the end and use that to like articulate things. Um, I think pencil happens, pencil drawing in a watercolor happens more at the end of my watercolors than at the beginning, but I do sometimes do it at the beginning. Cool. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, absolutely. What about you, Mary? What do you do? What happens to you? Um, I feel like it really depends on, on what I'm doing as well, like what the subject matter is or what I'm copying. Um, mm. But I, I feel like sometimes I want to start with a few strokes, but I don't, I can be tempted to like do too much or place too much at the beginning and think of it as like then copying that drawing instead of the relationship with the thing I'm looking at. So um, at maybe some like minimal, minimal strokes, but I love as well, just kind of diving into the colors too, and then kind of working from there. I don't think I've ever done pencil later though. So I think that's a really interesting idea. Maybe I'll need yeah, to try this. Yeah, it's um like I said, I usually keep it to at the end because I do start with general shapes that sort of take form as I go along. And then I'll pick like a couple really essential things that I really want to articulate. And sometimes that's just done best with um with pencil, even colored pencil sometimes. Um I, I've started doing that. I think, in fact, you were you were the one who introduced me to like water soluble pencil years ago, and um, I have a few that are like water sol soluble colored pencils, and I'll take those sometimes at the end and use those to articulate things. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Thank you. Yeah. Absolutely. Thank you. All right. Let me switch back to my desk now that my paper's dry. On, uh, hi, hi, Nick. On this topic, it's funny. I was taking a pastel class uh, in person at a gallery I was working at. And uh, the, the artist, I said, uh, like the same thing. Do you sketch out your pieces a little bit before he goes? Nope, never. He, I said, Do you ever use a sketchbook? Nope, never. He just really dives in and doesn't. But I think he's been years at it. And so it was sort of took me aback that no, what do you mean sketchbook? He was thinking it was so funny. So funny. Yeah. yeah I mean, I think it, it's up to what you want to get out of your practice. Um I don't I don't put precision first. I definitely put like light first. Um and also just what's fun, which to me is like painting in wet technique because it's so, it's just, I mean, it's a, it's a roller coaster ride of color on your paper right there. Um, anything could happen. Um, so shaping things with colors and figuring out light, like I kind of demonstrated, like taking a wet paper towel and wiping out parts to leave light. I find that really satisfying. Um, but yeah, I mean, everyone's different, you know? Um, and through practice, we can understand what's important to us when we do, when we paint and when we draw.
All right, so everything's about dry now. Let's see. Let's start going in with some violet. So I'm going to go... It's a pretty crimson violet here. I think I'm going to build some of that up first. And then maybe some of that over here too. Let's see. So I'm not going to wet my paper first this time. I'm just going to make like a pretty diluted color. So like not necessarily diluted in that I want it to be super transparent, but I just want it to run all over the place with my brush. I don't want it to be too, uh, too like strict or um, defined. So I, let me see what I could do with this. I'm gonna take this and just start. So it looks like my paper's still a little bit moist, but I can keep brushing in some of this color and it'll move around. It's still pretty loose, nothing to, like a really dry stroke would kind of just stay in place, but I want this to, to have a little bit of wiggle room. All right, so now that I've added like, you know, just the beginning of some of this architecture in fact, I'm not gonna take my paper towel and dab some of this stuff on the right out. That's a little too, that's a little more, a little, I don't want these things to be as present as they are. They can be a little more in the background. So I'm also gonna try attempting another one. I want a little more red like vermilion red in this area. So I'm gonna try just layering some water on top and hopefully dropping in a wash of red there. Let's see what happens. It might turn out a mess, but uh, the painting goes on, life goes on, it's okay. It's not the end of the world. This is a practice hour. Something my students in my classes often hear me say is that we're not making masterpieces here. So I'll keep that in mind.
Oops. I'll just look at that and then fuss over that too much. Let's keep getting this red down because it's working. All right. So something I've learned recently with watercolor, and you know, maybe this has been apparent to very experienced watercolorists, which I will not claim to be, but I'm learning, the more I practice, the more I'm learning about being attentive to this, the level of absorption or like the stage of absorption that your water is um, into your paper, because different things are possible at different stages of absorption. So for example, I'm gonna keep trying to darken this area where the architecture is. And because it's still moist, I can drop strokes in here, okay? But because it, it's only moist and it's not like a puddle on top of my paper, the color won't travel like all, all over the place. Sometimes you could put some color down and it'll glide all over your paper, which can be fun. Again, I like to paint, you know, by the seat of my pants. Um, but there's this really fun sort of diffuse thing that happens when you wait until the paper is moist, but not quite yet, um, or, you know, no longer a puddle on your paper, but just moist so that you can you can create these diffuse strokes that um, don't have a hard edge and still you know darken your paper the way you, you want them to but they don't they don't have a hard edge they're kind of soft still which is great for a more you know atmospheric image like this. So let me keep adding some more of that while I'm at that stage of absorption.
All right, I'm trying to get some of the cooler tones in the architecture. Maybe I'm fussing over it a little too much. As one does. But, okay, not bad, not bad. So, Huh. Oh. Excuse me there for the sneeze. So I think I am just dropping a little bit more color in into some of this faded out architecture in the far back. Um, I want to let this sit a little bit. I can tell that, you know, this is cool. But um, I want to give it just a minute just to sit and dry a little bit. And then I'm going to figure out how am I going to... There's a few dark marks. Not really dark, but some things I'd like to do in the foreground here to get the texture of that, of that um, water. So I'm going to have a little... Give it a moment to dry the paper and then have a little... think about how I might want to accomplish that. It may actually have to do with just what I was talking about, wetting the paper, letting the water absorb a little bit, um, and then waiting for that sweet spot in its absorption to, to go in and um, add some of those strokes that they could, so that they come out a little diffuse. All right. I'm going to do that now. Um, everyone keep working. I'm just going to take this out of full screen for one moment so I could do one thing. I hope that doesn't, there you go. That, I hope that doesn't drastically change. doesn't look like it does. So I'm going to get a little water down around the bottom and let's, I'm just going to not be too precise about where it lands, but just get it down there so that it can start absorbing into the paper. And then maybe I'll try diffusing some strokes into the water, uh, like the water, the foreground of the image. And we'll see how that goes. We will see how that goes. Um, while I'm letting that to absorb, uh, something I just thought of um, that I'd like to share with you all is if you are a, you know, into painting and drawing and you find, you know, fulfillment, joy, whatever, something interests you about painting, um, there's, for those of us who went to Marshoots, those of us in this meeting that went to Marshoots, 
um, a teacher, close friend of mine, sister and brushstrokes, mentor to many of us, um, who is an extremely talented artist and is moving, has moved from a little bit from the teaching side to now starting to bring some of her artwork to the surface, to the light, artwork that she's kept hidden for years, talents that she's kept hidden for years um, in to better serve her students as a teacher um, is actually giving an artist talk this coming Thursday. Um, her name is Pauline Betrancourt. Um, she's a dear friend of mine and she's giving an online artist talk presented by the Marshute School, um, showing her work, talking about her process, um, answering any questions from anyone who wants to learn from her. That is a completely free presentation uh, that I'd like for you all to know about. If you've got time, if you'd, if you'd like to you know, draw inspiration from other artists, her work is quite powerful. Um, some of the colors that she uses sort of remind me of this one, her heart, the way that she harnesses light, uh, the expression in her strokes. Um, so this Thursday, I don't know the time off the top of my head, but um, take a look at that link. I just dropped it in the chat. If that's something that would be of interest to you, I encourage you all to check it out and give her a listen to what she's got to present on and share with us. Okay. I think I need a couple more, a little bit more time for absorption. Let's see. But you know what? While it's absorbing, I can sort of figure out what in the world do I want to do in terms of hue. All right. So nothing crazy. Maybe just a little violet down there to sort of little gray tertiary violet to counteract and complement the all that yellow that I got going on. So getting some of that right here. So I got some water on my paper. It's slowly absorbing into the paper, but I'm using that to drop a layer of just this light faint violet on top to sort of support the texture of the water in the foreground here. Let's see. And again, I'm taking advantage of the water being in the process of absorbing, of, of being absorbed into the paper. So it's not, no, not really a puddle anymore. Um, so I have a little bit more control, but it's not so, you know, absorbed and dry that the the strokes just kind of stay um, exactly where my brush touches the paper. That can be kind of a harsh, you know, when you when you play in wet technique for so long, suddenly when you make a dry stroke, it looks really feels really harsh. It's like music that's way too loud because I've never listened to music that's way too loud in my life before. It's harsh. All right. And I want to leave some areas light, but let's see what we got here. So what I've added is pretty diluted. I do want it to be faint. I do want it to sit on top. I'm going to let it absorb just a wee bit more. And then I'm going to go in as it's absorbing, as it reaches its later stages of absorption, I'm going to go in with a slightly darker value of a similar violet, just to get a little more of that texture of the water. All right. 
And just a heads up, we're coming up on just only a couple more minutes with this work, and then we will take a look at what everyone has done. I'm not going to put anyone in the spot. Don't worry. I know this stuff is personal, but it is nice when we share. And it is nice to see how other people handle the same image. Um, all right. So I want a little more blue. I don't want to be quite so purple as that. I want to make it a little more blue. Let's see how, how I can try and adjust that. I think I'm going to have to go with that. All right, I should try it. So just a couple of... Yeah, here we go. Now we got some water happening. Boom. And all right, maybe a couple more over here on the left. Okay, pas mal. Pas mal du tout. Pas mal du tout. Okay, so I'm going to bring my image back and how about one more minute with this and then we will take a look at what we got. Nick, this is Elspeth. I'm sorry, but we have tickets, so I've got to go. I'll see Elspeth, you next month. No yeah, see you next month. Yeah. Thanks. Have fun at the, the show, whatever show you're going to. Thanks. I, I look forward to getting the colors on this one the way I want them. Oh, yeah. Talk to you later. Well, yeah, talk to you later, Elspeth. Take care. All right, everyone. So last couple finishing strokes, and then I will take away the image. All right. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Okay. Wonderful, everyone. So um, I um, I hope that was all right. I hope it was some good practice, some good uh, color, some good exercises with color there. Um, what I'd like to do, if you all wouldn't mind, is take a moment, take your, your watercolor, and I'd like to take a screenshot of everyone holding up the work that I'm going to send to Rose, executive director of the Leo Marshute School, and she's going to email it out to everyone, and then we could all be, you know, take a look at the work that we've done together. Um, let's see what we got here. Boom. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. All right right up to the camera yeah jules yeah you're yeah you're you too jules this is beautiful this is beautiful yeah great lovely all right yeah mary yeah mary yeah mary use pastels oh. pastels that's why yeah. you have the glove on i saw the i yeah. saw the latex glove <laughs> oh beautiful i everyone. don't know it just seemed like pastels were what it required today. Lovely. Oh my God. All and right. I hate pastels. 
Oh, that's <laughs> okay. All right. Here, actually, Mary Beth has hers up. Mary, could you put yours up one last time? And then I'll just take one more screenshot and then we will call it an evening. All right. You all are lovely. Look at this. Yeah, colors was a good choice today. Wonderful. All right. All right. Everyone, it has been such a joy practicing with you all. I'm going to get this screenshot sent out to Rose. She will email it out to you all. She always likes to do a little follow-up message um, to say thank you. I'm going to say thank you. It's great to see, you know, recurring um, participants over and over again. Um, I, I hope that you'll come again next month. Next month, I'll be doing this from D.C., so I won't be, it won't be my dinner time when we do this. I'll be a little closer to home, closer to some people on the East Coast and stuff. Yeah, Rachel, my, my pleasure. Keep coming back, Rachel. It's been um, absolute joy. Um, so real quick reminder, all of the links in the chat that I've dropped, leomarshootschool.org, check out what they do. They're fantastic. Site and in dot site. that's my website. Sign up for practice memos so we can do this every month together. Um, leomarshootschool.org slash support if you'd like to make a donation. And then that last link, um, leomarshootschool.org community artists featured to see uh, my dear friend Pauline share her work. Do, um, do you do you have a time and date set for the next practice? So I don't, you're... unfortunately. Oh, okay. I think if I had to guess right now, it's going to be in the second half of the month because I don't get home until like the middle of the month. I don't get home until the like the 11th or the 12th. Um, so it'll probably be one of the last two Sundays in April. Yeah, I'm doing a little traveling. I'm going to Tuesday. I'm going to France for a couple of weeks and then coming back here, moving apartments. Yeah, Jules. <laughs> and um, moving apartments here. So I probably won't be home until the middle of April. So the second half of April is when we'll do this again, Laura. All right. Um, everyone else, it has been absolutely lovely. I'll hang on for a couple minutes if you have any feedback or questions or anything like that, but it has been a joy seeing you all. Mary, give Rob a big hug for me. Mary well, Rogers, you. I'll see you in DC in a couple weeks. I'll stop by Sam's class. Yeah, 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 yeah. Corey, great to have you join us again. Good to see you. Thank Alice, you. you too. Always a loyal monthly practice practicer jules i'm so happy you came i hope i hope you do this again with us yes <laughs> yes 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 and my dear students mary Kay, laura maureen thank you deb great to see you all nick yeah deb so i was in your in a recent class but I couldn't okay. come to one of the sessions. Okay. I don't uh, use color yet. Oh, so 